This is a demo video of the Lowry Micro Genie V-100, which I have modified quite extensively. You'll see right here, there's some uh, quarter inch ins and outs that I modified. And then on the side as well, there's some, you can't really see them, but there's some eighth inch outputs for extra bonus tones out. So, going through all of the functions, just as a regular keyboard, uh, the output is very loud. It's a headphone output, and it also has built-in speakers, which can get extremely loud. input from my modular synthesizer on the other side of the room. There we go, it's a little better. So, Genie, chords, bass, the arpeggio is off when Genie is on, so you have to go to music chord. So this is the mixing area. stuff like minor seconds. keyboard section. So we'll go through all the tones, starting at the top string ensemble. There's this AOC, which gives you another octave ensemble. Makes it sound a little richer, and then there's phase and sustain as well. Accord. Always my favorite. We'll get rid of the phase and ensemble. <coughs> Vibraphone. Yeah, jazz flute. Clarinet. And the split happens right here, so that's the lowest note you can play before the accompaniment and the Magic Genie and all the music chord and arpeggios take over. Jazz organ. Regular organ. And brass ensemble. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, keyboard which gets rid of all the other and so 
So the modifications that I did on the side basically give you whatever the preset sound is, the main tone that's being output, and it gives you kind of quasi sine, uh, low, low mid, high mid, and high, all four outputs simultaneously, giving you uh, kind of a fat sound, and then there's a sawtooth, which I could find on the circuit board, low, mid, and high only, um, but that's also a very usable function. There's a mic input on the side, there's a gain for the mic, and then going into the individual outputs, um, so anything that is a pink uh, Dymo sticker is basically a switched input. What that means is that if I patch into the clock input, it's going to bypass the internal and just use whatever's patched in. Likewise with the outputs, like the drums, the main, the high bass, the ARP genie chords, those are going to be uh, taken out of the full mix whenever I uh, patch out of here. So we'll go for just the drums. Uh, okay, why is it not working? be using an unbalanced cable instead. Oh, right, this is my clock input. No wonder. Silly, Norman. Okay, here we go. So now we have just the drums output. These are still coming through the main speakers here, internal to the keyboard, the, the lead that I'm playing. And then there's the main output. Shut that up. Basically the main output is going out to my PA. There's also a special fun low bass. Uh, let's get that to shut up. I'm just going to have to dead patch it. Just a second. Dead patch the headphones. Okay. Uh, okay, and this is for the bass line, so you have to have something going. Let's see. Oh, okay, it's going supposedly. Oh, right, you have to be in there. Very fat square wave that's kind of modulated. And then there's the high bass and. Line change uh, per preset that uh, per preset rhythm that you have. Let's see if we can find a better one. That's a pretty good one. Disco. Okay, and then there's square low, which is another voice out of the full keyboard. It's a little bit quieter than the main output. And then there's square high. Not working. Great. Uh, and then the individual drum outputs. So just the kick. Oh, whoops. We'll go for a rock beat. And then snare and clave. It's a little quiet, needs to be boosted and signal wise. And then the hi hats and the tom. Uh, there might not be any toms. just the drums output. 
So there you have it. A uh, super fun keyboard with a lot of functionality and a lot of modifications. Uh, thanks for watching.